As an auto reviewer, I've seen a lot of cars and taken part in a lot of different opportunities. And after a while, it isn't hard to get the sense that you've been there or done that or driven this all before. Deja vu can creep into this job from time to time, but sometimes, on rare occasions, it does so in ways you'd never quite expect. Morning, Eric. Your coffee's ready. Thanks, dear. Don't get me wrong, uh, both routine and repetition can be good things in a way. Good morning, Eric. Hey, good morning, Steve. And you know what? In case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. A good cup of joe and a friendly neighborhood hello are the cogs to my daily wheel, and when the wheel stays balanced, rolling along the highway of life isn't half bad. But then sometimes those wheels can warp, and the cycle isn't as predictable as we're used to. Hey, Tom. Hey, Eric, how are you doing today? Good stuff. Looking forward to your weekend of GLI? Yeah, you know what? I'm going to look forward to it, but i got to tell you, there's a whole lot of trims with the Jetta, and i got to talk to you maybe soon about getting into the other ones as well. Oh, you're right about that one. I think we're going to figure out a way to get you into some of these other Jettas. All right, well, we'll talk to you soon, man. Have a good one. Uh, we'll get you into some other Jettas, all right. After picking up my latest review car, the 2013 Volkswagen Jetta GLI, it was time to take it through its paces. In a large and diverse Jetta family, the GLI is the high-performance athlete that likes to throw in a bit of sophistication for good measure. From its lower profile and ride height to its red brake calipers, 18-inch alloy wheels and custom GLI honeycomb grille, the GLI is designed to be different than its Jetta siblings. With a 2-liter TSI engine offering 200 horsepower and 207 pound-feet of torque, it's also designed to be more powerful. Inside, the GLI Sport steering wheel is fun to hold and the overall interior has improved from its off-the-line predecessor. A touchscreen with GPS is included, although the screen is a bit small for my liking. Fuel efficiency is posted at 8.8 .8 liters per 100 kilometers in the city and 6.1 liters per 100 kilometers on the highway. Despite being about 15% off the mark myself, both admittedly aren't bad, but at the high end of the Jetta family overall. Still, the GLI is a popular and powerful member of the Jetta family and one where routine drives make for happy lives. Hello! Yeah. Home! Yeah. Hey, got it. But it seems someone thought my routine needed a bit of change. Hey, honey, I just forgot something in the Jetta. I'll be right back, okay? What the heck? What's going on here? Yeah, a big car talks to you and does a bit of switcheroo kind of change. Volkswagen, das Auto. Whoa, what, what, what the heck? Volkswagen, no Jetta for you. Yeah, I can see that. I'm not sure why or who the heck's talking, but what Jetta am I sitting in now? Volkswagen, Jetta, TDI. TDI? Uh, turbo diesel? But the GLI had a turbo too. Whoa. Why show me this one? Volkswagen, Jetta, TDI, better on gas, with <laughs> yeah. power. Right, thanks. I'm just gonna leave now, because this is freaking me out a little bit. Volkswagen. All right, all right, I get it, you're Volkswagen. Jeez. Thanks, dear. The better fuel efficiency of the turbocharged diesel TDI is indeed a positive step, and it seemed like it signaled other positives around me to happen as well. Morning, Eric. Morning, Steve. And you know what? In case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs> With VW Voice Dude taking the GLI away and putting the TDI in its place, it was time for another day of driving. Whereas diesel cars once meant noisy, dirty, and smelly, today they're a highly advanced, clean, and very fuel efficient. Diesel fuel has about 30% more energy per unit than regular gas does, so fuel economy is superior, but without having to sacrifice performance or torque. 
published fuel ratings are 6.7 liters per 100 in city and 4.7 liters per 100 on the highway. Now my experience again was off by that mark by about 10%. The 2.0-liter TDI engine offers 140 horsepower but a solid 236 pound-feet of torque which you notice when needing to boogie. New diesel engine technology and fuel enhancements make it far cleaner than it used to be. Diesel engines do sound different and I noticed how much louder it was when it was cold than a normal engine. Eventually though, the ride is quiet and the handling and performance of the car is enjoyable. Another disadvantage to diesel is limited availability as not all gas stations sell diesel. I had to visit three stations myself before finding one that sold diesel, but that is improving slowly and I guess if you don't need to fill up as often, it might be a moot point anyway. Hello, I'm home. Hey guys. Hey guys. What, hi guys. You just hide. Huh. Hey honey, I just forgot something in the jet. I'll be right back, okay? Based upon the bizarre experience of the night before, I was curious to see if surreal lightning would strike twice. Well, not again. It did. Hello. Volkswagen. Das Auto. So, I see we're doing the switcheroo thing again, are we? Why can't you just do that with my beat-up minivan? Volkswagen. Time for a different Jetta. Right. Got that. Done this before, remember? So what, this is no longer a TDI? Volkswagen, Jetta Hybrid. Jetta Hybrid? Well, I love hybrids, but the TDI was good on gas too. And it was powerful with the turbocharger. Volkswagen, Jetta Turbo Hybrid. Turbo Hybrid. A hybrid, but with a turbocharger? Farfenlugen. Hey, that's our line. Yeah, sorry. Whatever. Your coffee's ready. Oh, thanks, dear. Just... So once again, the cogs of my daily wheel were adjusted, but this time with a sporty eco twist. And since the twist was more radical than normal, it seemed that other radical moments were destined to follow. Good morning, Eric. Hey, good morning, Steve. And you know what? In case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and... Good night! Good night! Yeah! Come on. The first-of-its-kind turbo hybrid was a finalist at the recent Canadian Green Car Awards and for good reason. Its 1.4-liter four-cylinder TSI engine combined with a 20-kilowatt electric motor produced 170 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque. Better yet, its power boost feature provided a bit of an electric oomph when the gas pedal is fully depressed. Its more aerodynamic design reduces drag by about 10% and the new 7-speed dual-clutch transmission is 20% more efficient than regular automatics. During highway coasting, the turbo hybrid switches to full EV, which increases highway fuel efficiency beyond where most hybrids typically achieve. Put everything together and you get a very impressive fuel rating of 4.5 liters per 100 in the city and 4.2 liters per 100 kilometers on the highway. And again, as per both situations before this, my own experience was off by about 10 to 15%. All is not perfect though, as the need for a battery reduces trunk space when compared to a regular Jetta by about 25% and the overall structure of the car seemed less sturdy than the GLI I first took home. That said, these things didn't diminish my overall enjoyment of the turbo hybrid by much and at the end of the drive I was pretty sure that there wouldn't be any other surprises since I'd found the ideal Jetta for me and when you find what's best for you, other things that don't normally happen tend to take place as well. While I still don't know just how I got to experience three Jettas within the confines of my regular cog-in-the-wheel kind of day, I'm left with the sense that as far as small-size sedans go, the Jetta family offers one of the most diverse lineups out there. And as for me, well, before I review another car, I think I'm going to give Bill Murray a call. I never thought groundhogs and jettas had anything in common, but after these past few days, nothing would surprise me anymore. I'm Eric Novak.